You all really want to know how to generate consistent characters for use in a story, in a comic book, and some sort of animation using Midjourney, and there is a way to do it. But it's not as in, it's not as simple as a YouTube comment reply, which is why I haven't really replied to you all. I'm Addy. Welcome back to Analog Dreams. Today is a Midjourney slash a couple side tool tutorials, as I'm going to show you how to generate a consistent character with Midjourney using a method released in their FAQ channels buried deep that. I haven't fully tested myself. You're gonna come along with me, but it seems like it's fairly straightforward once you get the process down. And given that it can be really annoying trying to generate the same character and getting differences each time, I think this will help a lot. So first and foremost, step one is to generate a person, to have a person image, not AI generated or not, you know, mid journey immediately generated that you're using as your reference like you need a picture of a person that generally stands for what you're looking for so in this case you could use this person does not exist.com which uses the gan general generative adversarial network uh, to generate fake people and you just kind of keep refreshing until you find one that you like which is something you could do here and these are ai generated so you don't need permission from anybody or anything to use these as your basis because it's, it's, it's not a real person. Like, the, it's in the name. The person does not exist. So we could use this guy. Or you could use a photo of a model or something, again, with permission. Or for, if you don't, you know, want to go through the process of getting permission, you could use a stock library. This is Envato Elements. That's what I have a subscription to. I'm not going to sell you on it. I just want to use it. So we can come over here to uh, stock photos. And then we can start looking for one person. And we can just start just looking for a model. Uh, I could search for... Hmm. I don't know what I want to search for. Let's take inspiration from what we have here. Someone working on something. What you want, just to be clear, you want a clear headshot. You, you don't want to focus on any other details right now because we're going to generate that for the AI. You want a clear headshot that is kind of front facing and not a whole lot else from your source image here. So we have like an elderly gentleman we could focus on that gives a good source image or we could keep refreshing. This person does not exist until we get what we want. But you want to find a person. So I'm going to do that real quick. All right, I think we're going to use this person from Envato, Asian skateboarder guy, Asian young man with a skateboard looking at camera. Going to click download, blah, 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 sure. All right, next up, we want to generate a name. So character name generator, find a character name generator online. You can get ones catered to specific like genres. You can get them specific, you know, species, races, whatever. You can also ask chat GPT if you want for a name generator. We're gonna just create a name. We're gonna go with real names and we're looking at an Asian person. I'm gonna choose a Korean name if that's an option. Korean names. I apologize if these aren't good. I am just... You, you want one that you can use consistently to reference your character. You're basically building a database of references of your character based on this name. So you kind of want it to be a little made up. Obviously, I don't know if these are people's names. Soul. I like the name Soul. So we're going to copy this and then we're going to open up Mid Journey. As per my organization tutorial, I'm going to make a new thread here that we're going to reference. So we're going to be under, we're just going to go under scrap for me for now. I'm going to make a new thread. We're going to call this character generator. I don't know why it takes you to the text field instead of the thread name when you need to make a thread name. We're just going to go ahead and open up the full thread view. And now you need to upload that image for reference so you can use it for an image source. I've shown that before. You can paste up to four at least. I've heard someone say that you can do unlimited. Well, unlimited. But you can do at least four image sources as references in your prompt here for Midjourney. So we do need to upload it real quick. I'm just going to... To not my favorite place in the world, especially on mobile, but we'll just do an imager upload. And actually, before we do that, we should crop in on him. So, and then paste it into Discord. And then you have the image right there. I can copy a link to that image. And now I can do slash imagine. We're going to paste in that headshot image. And now you're going to generate it, basically the idea of this person and their headshot. You're going to generate their first headshot using Mid Journey. So I'm going to copy our name from Firefox. Sol Hyun Woo. Not saying that right. I know. Sol Hyun Woo. 
an Asian male skateboarder. In his early 20s. With wavy hair and thick eyebrows. With a wide nose. With a tat... Uh, with a wide jaw. With a long neck. And for this headshot generation, you don't want to describe anything about the scenery, about what they're doing, about makeup, clothes, any of that. You just want the face. And then you want to do, in theory, uh, some sort of descriptor of the portrait. So include portrait, but then it's easier, at least based on the FAQs, to use a certain stylization. So we'll say pencil sketch, and then dash dash S 1250 for just a little bit of stylization. And then we're gonna say V4. It may not let me do the stylize with V4, so we will see what happens there. Fire that off. Yeah, it does. Nope, it does not. Oh, stylize must be between zero and 1000 with V4. I see. All right, we're gonna right click this, or actually we're just gonna click this imagine and copy our prompt back out so we can try again. You will need to play around with deleting what's after imagine to get it to regenerate the prompt. All right, so if that was 1250, we'll do like 500. That might be too much, so we want to play around to get the perfect prompt for, or like the perfect headshot, or relatively perfect first. So we'll fire that off, give it a second. And honestly, it's kind of eerie how close we got. I really like this one. Like, I think that's it. So number three, we're going to go ahead and upscale number three. While that's upscaling, the whole exercise we're doing here is we're trying to find a select, I'm going to say about four or five, group of headshots that really represent what our character looks like in the face that we want to keep recreating with different mediums, different stylizations and different image weights so that we are eliminating all of the mid-journey influence as possible so that way when we reference all of those images it's just looking for those consistent elements of the face rather than picking up on its own you know baked in mid-journey looking style or whatever this is less of an issue with v4 but it's still an issue so that upscaled that one pretty nicely we're going to come in here with our prompt and we're going to say the same thing but then we're going to come in here and change that to matte painting we're gonna do a lower stylization of like 250 image weighting isn't really a thing in v4 but you want to you want to generate a couple different ones so we're gonna we're gonna as that one's going with the matte painting we're gonna do the same thing but we are going to change the stylization again to say 325 and we also want to change matte painting to photograph Let it generate those, and then we will come back and see if we need to upscale more or generate more, or maybe we use this one that we upscaled as a reference to generate those other styles as well. And just while you're following along, just generate a couple other mediums. So we've got colored pencil outline, matte painting, we got normal photograph, I'm doing a Zeiss 35 millimeter photograph just to see if it makes a difference. You've got ink outline drawing, and I'm gonna do one more that is a comic book style. So I am going to come in here and once again, copy our prompt with our image source from our first image. And we're going to change ink outline drawing to comic book art. I hope that's okay. And get that one fired off. And now we have a bunch of different references that more or less we're going to be able to pick ones that look like the same person for a bank of photos that reference the face that we're using. I will have a link to the guide I'm using, by the way, in the description down below. Uh, it's a very long guide with a lot of features. I highly recommend diving in, but if you just wanna follow along with videos, that's what these are for. All right, now I'm gonna get some upscales going from each of these. So some of these look a little bit different in age, but I think that second one really resembles what we're going for with the matte painting. With the standard photograph, uh, number one is again, really doing it for me with the Zeiss 35 millimeter photograph. We got mostly the same thing, but honestly, I don't feel like this looks quite as much like our guy, maybe number four. And then with the comic book art, these are pretty good. I'm going to go with number one on that one. So we're going to get these upscaled. And then what you want to do is create some sort of 
document that notes down what the links for all of these. So I'm going to dismiss these real quick and we are going to get the links for all of these individual images. All right, I'm just going to use the built-in notes notes app to make this easy for you all to get a better link you can react with the envelope react and the mid journey bot will dm you some details about those images i covered this in my full like course on mid journey but send the envelope react to all the ones that you want seeds and information on and things like that we are missing one yeah it never upscaled the ink outline drawing one we will try that again because it seems to be stuck where is we got pencil sketch oh there oh it just never actually drew the ink outline drawing that's weird that one got caught in the process well, there we go i'm thinking number two is gonna be him yeah that's gonna be it all right come down here upscale number two but then when we go to our dm with the mid journey bot you can see here we have lots of good information about these the usefulness of this would be if you wanted to modify how the face looks, you want to add scars or change one of the elements or something, you would use the seed with the dash dash seed uh, flag and you could actually take one of these and just ever so slightly tweak it with your prompt. So you'd feed it the same prompt but then change a little bit and use the seed parameter and you'd be able to do that with this. Otherwise you're just making yourself a note here. But we would come down here. And the cool thing about Discord is you can just reference the image links directly as part of your mid-journey prompt like we did before. So we're going to take this one, copy link, and that's going to copy the actual image link. Come back to our, come back to our notes. That's going to be number one. And actually I'm going to, whoa, I'm going to title these just so we know. So this will be colored pencil. Of course now notes thinks that's a link, but that's fine. And then this one will be matte painting. Matte painting. Because you just want to be able to keep track of your character. You don't want to copy image, you want to copy link. This one's going to be photograph. And obviously there's some minor shifts between this guy, these photos of this guy, but like, it's more or less the guy we're going for, right? So we have all of this. And then we can start generating some new poses. The goal is to have a very recognizable face to Mid Journey using similar descriptors that are available in different formats so no one particular medium dominates the style or like changes a characteristic about your head. So next, we go through and stack however many image prompts of your face as you could, swap the portrait for a different kind of shot, pick a costume, a scenery, you know, whatever you wanna do to change your prompt there and you can build something cool. But you also want to use the name you came up with. So we're going to say slash imagine and we're going to we're going to go wild now. So we're going to copy our image links for our prompts. So I'm going to copy those out of Discord and moving forward whenever it generates the prompt like it did here, it will generate a shorter link uh, that's based on mid journey and you can just use that MJ link instead of the long ass discord links but at first you want to make sure you're using direct links to the images just to be safe i'm just gonna copy all of these paste them in there so now we have a big old fat stack of <laughs> image source links and then you want to type your name so soul hyun woo comma that is your character you want it to recognize your character and then you just want to you know describe what they're doing so i'm gonna say is a Nine, nine, 80s punk skateboarder skateboarding in a skate park. That's a lot of repeat words. Wearing baggy jeans and a beanie. Wearing a hoodie. We're going to say wide shot, full body shot, cinematic lighting. Hyper realistic Zeiss 35 millimeter photo port. Well, we want to cut out portrait because we're doing the wide shot. We're going to do four magazine cover. And we're going to say stylize 500. Actually, we're going to leave stylize off now just so we can see the results as it comes in. We're going to say aspect ratio of two by three. No, three by two because we want that. Well, no, two by three if we want a magazine cover. And then V4, which I should set as my default. I just keep forgetting. 
All right, so the good and bad thing about using Discord links is that they get, re well, it's not a good thing. The bad thing about using Discord links is that they get really, really long, so having that many links back to back in one thing just was too many characters for mid-journey to parse. Uh, here we go with using imager links, which then just turn into these mid-journey links that we can just use from now on moving forward. Uh, it's still a little too close of a shot for my liking. But it takes that same character. Admittedly, we're getting a little bit more stylized jaw lines than I'm necessarily going for. I don't know what's going on with his cheeks there. But we're starting to get something cool. And of course, you gotta iterate on everything to get exactly what you want. So we're gonna take this exact prompt and now we have these shorter links. I'm not exactly happy with the first result we got. So we're gonna paste it in here. We're gonna look for some things we can do. So I have full, I have a fully body shot. That was a typo. Uh, full body shot. Cinematic lighting, we're gonna do Zeiss 14 millimeter photo for like a wide angle. For magazine cover, for action shot. Overall, we're getting kind of the look I'm going for. It's just not getting the exact framing I'm looking for. And mostly because it's taking that from the images. And unfortunately, V4 doesn't let you do image weights. And image weighting would let me lower that image weight a little bit to help with poses. That should be fine. We're going to go ahead and fire that off real quick. So with our link fix in mind, I took a, two, a few swings at trying to get the skateboarding picture that I wanted. And honestly, overall, I am impressed with the dynamicness that V4 can create in the first place for portraits, as well as just the overall consistency we are getting in our character. Every once in a while, you know, there's gonna be some subtle differences, but we are, are nailing down a fairly consistent look and it's doing a great job generating these wild portraits. I had a lot of trouble getting it to break out of the portrait because we are just giving it, you know, very close up shots as references. Uh, but as an experiment, I fed the same prompt to V3 and it's stark how different V3 and V4 are now. Mid Journey has come a long way. I, I do love the cinematic bokeh kind of film look here that they're going for here. Although my character does look significantly younger and his face is like smaller uh, in this specific print. But I also started uh, trying to feed it some other scenes so we could, you know, try out some other costumes and stuff. So here he's wearing some martial arts uniforms and it looks, looks like he's a bit more in a martial arts dojo. Uh, I'm still giving it lens things, so I also tried one. I don't expect it to s do well with this, but I, I made our character an American founding father wearing a white wig and 1700s-era 1700s era clothing as a Renaissance painting portrait. I, we'll see. So there you have it. Lots of goofy images, but also lots of pretty neat looking images generated with the same character with mostly the exact same attributes. And you can continue to fine tune from there to get better results if you'd like. I've got this question a lot. I never have a great answer that I can concisely give. So I just wanted to make a video walking through it with you all. I know it's a little bit more long winded than if I just taught up front, but I wanted to experience it in real time as well. I'm also very behind on actually catching up to this channel after the holidays and wanted to just kind of record as I go. But I think this was quite the experience and you got to see the mistakes I made along the way, which I have having taught video in videos online for 15 years. I continue to find that to be a very valuable aspect of user-generated tutorials rather than textbooks and things like that. When you get to see the mistakes made as they're made, you get to work through the reasons why they're not. Anyway, I'm rambling on. We got some cool, goofy photos, including this character as a Wendy's employee, which I absolutely love. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, you should check out this one on upscaling these images for print or for, you know, higher resolution play and how that would work out for actual physical goods that I have printed using AI art, because that video was a lot of fun. Remember to be kind, rewind.